Here's the man's life, and here is the man that many of you have read for many years, P.J. O'Rourke. Nice to see you, man. Hey, thank you. Thank you. I, uh, you're well, I, sus I suppose? You're all right? I'm fine, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of reasons to write a book. Uh, I, when I first heard you were writing a book... No, that, no, there's only one reason. <laughs> there's only one. Get paid? Bingo! <laughs> Got it in one. <laughs> Fine, but aside from that, there's a lot, a lot, lot easier ways to get paid than to write a book that is yeah. on an 18th century book about economics. It's like a 900-page tomb yeah. called Wealth of Nations, and you wrote a book about that book. Yeah, uh, it was one of those things. I did feel at times a little bit like I had uh, strayed in my life and wandered back to college, and the, and the term paper was way overdue. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but it was kind of fun. Uh, the The... the the idea is a series of books. This is uh, uh, books that shook the world, books that changed the world. We're calling it down in the states. I don't know why the difference. It mm -hmm. shakes the world up here. It, it changes it the world down there. <laughs> Go figure. I guess we're shook <laughs> enough in general, and, 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 and we don't need to be shaken anymore. Um, and, and the idea is to take these big honking tomes that really did change people's minds. It changed the course of mental history, at any rate. And uh, things like Das Kapital and the Origin of Species, Koran, uh, Old Testament, New Testament, Plato's Republic, and get somebody to read them for us because mm -hmm. we're not going to make it all the way through for, for ourselves. I mean, you, each of us will probably make it through one of them if somebody pays us to do it. Right. Like they pay me. <laughs> but, but, but we're not actually going to get through these things. And, so, uh, and yet they, they're undeniably important. So the idea is to get a general reader, somebody, a stand-in for ourselves to read this thing. Not, not an expert in the field, because an expert in the field is going to get into all sorts of technical stuff, and then we're going to have two books we don't understand. Right. The, the original <laughs> That's and, right. and the book about the original. And so I just felt my job was to be the regular reader and to, to, and to plow through this. And once I slowed myself down to 18th century reading speed, because there wasn't a lot on TV, and, you know, yeah, yeah. nobody radio, blogged. No radio plays There's yet. No radio plays, <laughs> yeah. no iPod. Right. <laughs> they were a patient bunch back there. You actually find out that the 18th century had a very clear prose style. It's not hard to understand. Much harder to understand, say, Shakespearean or Jacobian period before, uh, uh, before the Enlightenment. In some ways, it's harder to understand the, uh, the crazy romantics of the 19th century uh, that come after the Enlightenment. Enlightenment is very, they're, 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 they're into clarity of expression or into clarity of thinking. And, however, they do digress. It was their way of multitasking. Mm -hmm. I mean, if another thought occurred to them in the middle of what they're writing. There comes six pages on that. They just went with it. Yeah, they, they were unembarrassed. And the readers dug it. You know, they're going, oh, whoa, that, that's something new. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know that about his cat. <laughs> <laughs> but does it... At a certain point, when you when you were this, either when the project was presented to you or, or when you were doing this, did you think, why don't people just read Plato's Republic? Like, what does it say about our culture when we won't go through a book that clearly is important? I'd actually say that about Plato's Republic because it's not that huge, uh, uh, and it's a weird book, incidentally. And the fact that it is that that it, that 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 it has influenced a lot of political thinkers so it gets creepy. About, I mean, you get to the part in Plato's Republic where Plato th says that poetry should and music should be banned mm -hmm. except to praise famous men, and you go. Uh oh, <laughs> well, we have that now. It's called People Magazine. Exactly, like, we have all of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, you don't want to know. But something like the Origin of Species or the Wealth of Nations, there, there really is no good reason to read the whole nine thing. I mean, one of the reasons, one of the things I'm doing here is providing a little bit of a roadmap to the part of this that you might or anyone might actually like. I read a lot of your stuff when when I was growing up, reading Rolling Stone magazine, and people have found different ways to get to you. But there was always, obviously satire, but there was always a nice little political streak to it. And you've got to think that these days, um, is it better for you as a writer? You yeah. always, think that, you always think like Clinton was great for political fodder, oh, but Cl Clinton today is, is even more interesting. Anything that's good for political writers is bad for humanity. Uh, and so, yeah, it's excellent for me. You know? <laughs> Except that I also happen to be, in my spare time, when I'm at home, I'm a Republican, you know, mm -hmm. and so I'm heart sick. You know, I mean, this has been absolutely disgusting. They've been, you know, we're going through uh, this, you know, this, this whole thing where uh, all, during the Reagan years, we were going, oh, this is so great. Reagan's really working to cut the size of government down, cut the scope 
central government down. Golly, if we could just get a Republican Congress in there. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we get these, like, all these insane programs, like No Child Left Behind. I mean, what if they deserve to be left behind? What if they deserve a smack on the behind? You know, we got a, now, the United States now has a whole national testing program to test whether kids are, are what? Stupid? I mean, I've got kids. Kids are stupid. <laughs> you don't have to test to find out about that. It's, just, it's been hugely expensive. And, uh, and now, you know, the Democrats have taken over again. And so that's like a double nightmare because, you know, you, you elect the Democrats to control government spending. You, yeah, and you, you marry Angelina Jolie for her brains, you know. Right. She's a smart girl, man. But wait a second. So, 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 so your concern with the Republican administration today is the size of the government rather than the, the rest of the stuff that the rest of the world's concerned with when it comes to this Yeah, government? actually, that, that, that's true. I, I, I am concerned that they, that, that they failed in their basic mandate to, make gov to, to reduce the scope of government and keep the size of government in line. Uh, the Iraq war is kind of a separate question. I am not convinced that something this bad or worse wouldn't be going on if there had been a Democrat in the White House. It wouldn't be exactly the same. I mean, it'd probably be a different kind of wrong. Well, there uh, might not have been a war in Iraq, because mm, I mean, there would have been a war in Afghanistan, but the Iraq thing seemed to be a George Bush Jr. deal. Well, yeah, the way it, the way it came out, it did. there might have been some different war in Iraq. Iraq might have invaded Saudi Arabia. I don't know. You know I mean, uh, this was like mistake. You know, and it's, and it's always, I think, important in, in politics to distinguish mistake from being wrong. Not that you aren't wrong when you make a mistake, but I mean, mm -hmm. you know, to go in, 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 the Republicans know that their job as a political party is to reduce the scope and expense of government, you know. When it comes to foreign policy, nobody's ever known what their job is exactly. You know, it's a mystery wrapped in an enigma, you know, and, and you go, yeah, it, was this a bad move? Yeah, it sure looks like it was a bad move. On the other hand, it sure was great the way America stayed out of World War II, like until the last possible <laughs> right. minute, until Germans and the Japanese had conquered half the world. <laughs> so, so you have to be careful about you know uh, hindsight on on, on foreign policy. It, it's an interesting uh, you know transition for you. I know people do change and evolve as they grow, um, but certainly today, when you see people who have strong political convictions, they are there. This is who I am. And even when the government does things that they perceive as being wrong or mistakes, yeah. they stay with it. Um, you've evolved quite a bit politically, haven't you? Well, I don't know. You know, I, I come from an ordinary Middle West. I come from Toledo, Ohio, ordinary Middle West, uh, 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 lower middle class background, brought up very conservative, brought up Republican, uh, went to college, became a communist. Because, because college does that. Because college does that yeah. to you. And also because the, I wasn't going to get anywhere with the cute girls. <laughs> so so the football players. You did, it, you did it for chicks. That's why you I went last. For chicks, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I am so serious. I'm walking down an alley. It's like my first weekend of my freshman year. I'm walking down this alley, and there are two bars. A bar with all the fraternity and sorority kids and the football players and all that on one side. Of the, and I'm going, that's not happening for me. You know. And on the other side was kumbaya, my lord. You know, and <laughs> and girls smoking unfiltered cigarettes. You know, and wearing ballet slippers and leotards. And I thought. I could get somewhere over there. <laughs> oh. So you didn't even mean it at the time. Well, I didn't know I didn't mean it. You know, I was only yeah. 18. You know, I came home with a, with a jean jacket with a big red fist on the back, you know, my hair yeah. thrown down to my butt. My grandmother goes, Pat, I'm worried. Are, are you becoming a Democrat? <laughs> No, it's much worse than that. <laughs> well, of course I'm not a Democrat. And Lyndon Johnson's a fascist pig, you know. I, I'm a communist. And she goes, as long as you're not a Democrat. Nice. <laughs> you're fine. You know, we talked about how I, I used to read your stuff in Rolling Stone. There's been a real shift. When I was reading Rolling Stone, I was 14, 15 years old. And it was a place where I was actually introduced to a lot of social issues, political issues, and satire. Whereas as we've gone older, vehicles that are targeted towards people under the age of 30 usually just dumb it down. There's it seems no room that for that way to me. I mean, you know, I, I was wondering the other day whether I was just in the, engaging in nostalgia, thinking, oh, back in the day when I was writing for Rolling Stone, you know, back in the 80s, it was me and it was Hunter Thompson and it was, it was Greider and all these guys. We were talking about big issues and important issues and silly issues. Then I remembered that we all went down to interview. We did a group interview with Governor Clinton when he was running for president. And what did we ask him? We asked him which one was his favorite Beatle. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so awesome. Maybe it didn't used to be that I serious. I that same question all the time. <laughs> hey, and you know what his answer was? What? Paul. 
What does is, that tell you everything that's a about dumb answer? <laughs> although you know, Paul! although you know what? If you ask George W. Bush, that he would point to the beetle that ran across his kitchen floor. That would have been the difference. <laughs> or it'd be George. Or it'd be George. Yeah, even worse. Yeah, nice yeah. to see you. Thank you very much. Ringo's the only answer. Ringo's the only answer. DJ <laughs> O'Rourke, everybody. All right, lots more to come on the hour. We'll be right back.